Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I am bringing you three brand new light up Christmas DIYs. Now I have to say, I think that these three are some of my top favorites so far this crafty Christmas season. First, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and click all on the drop down menu so you're notified about all notifications. I have a variety of different Different videos and I know that you would love to catch them all. Alrighty, let's get started with the first light up DIY. So to begin, I'm gonna start off with this cute little reindeer that I got from the Dollar Tree. And it's not wood, it's like MDF board. But I'm gonna make this a standing sign so I don't need those holes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill those with spackling. And then once that dries, I'm gonna sand it down. And then I'm gonna sand off all of the spackling kind of on the tops, the tippy tops of the antlers too. That way it's ready to paint. Next, I'm gonna take my nutmeg paint and I'm gonna paint the little reindeer's face with that. Now, you'll notice I'm not painting the little nose and in a minute, we will jump to the antlers. We're gonna paint those a different color. All right, next I'm gonna take my light mocha apple barrel paint, and that's the color I'm going to use to paint the antlers. Now, as I'm painting, I am making sure to go around the edges, the sides as well, because it will be seen. So you definitely wanna make sure that that gets full coverage too. This was so easy to paint because there's different levels. I don't know if you can tell, like the antlers are on top of the face. So it was, it was easy to stay on the antlers and not get any on the face. Next, I'm going to use my hair dryer to heat up that little nose and heat up the glue underneath it. So then that way I can go ahead and pop the little nose off. I honestly tried to do this next step with the nose still attached, but it was like nearly impossible. So I did get that nose off. So I'm just gonna pull it off right here. And then I'm gonna take this sparkly red scrapbook paper and I'm just gonna simply hot glue the nose to the back of a little square of it. Then I'm going to cut around it. I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of doing a rough cut. I'm not like getting it really, really close because now I'm gonna take my sanding sponge and I'm going to sand in the down direction because that is just what I fi find to be the easiest and best way to get that all that extra paper off and give it a nice clean cut. So now I'm just going to take all of that extra paper off the sides. And then I'm gonna take the brush that had that nutmeg paint and I'm gonna actually go ahead and paint the sides because that way it will all blend in. And I am careful not to get the paint on the actual red nose. And now I'm just going to hot glue it back in place. How cute is he looking already? So cute. Okay, so I really wanted this to be extremely rustic. So I am taking almost a brand new sanding block because I wanted it to be very coarse and I'm gonna go around the edges of this entire thing. So I'm going to go around the, the face, the ears, the antlers, everything. Because I wanna bring out that original MDF board underneath. Now to get into those little spaces, I did use a nail file and that really, really seemed to work. Now the best way that I found to do this was just to put it on my surface and push down and sand and just go at it because <laughs> I really wanted this to be rustic on the edges and to have, and it gave it a really neat two-tone effect. Real quick, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by. I truly hope that you love what you see, and hey, stick around with me for a while by subscribing to my channel. If you're returning, you already know, I love you, I appreciate you, and I'm so happy that you chose to come back. All right, so after all my sanding was done, I am gonna take this leftover piece of wood that I had from another DIY. It's like a stand, I think, and that's exactly what I'm gonna use it for. But of course, I had to take off that sticker on the back, and so I just heated up with heated it up <laughs> with my hair dryer, scraped it off, sanded it down, and now I'm gonna paint the entire thing in white chalk paint from Waverly. 
So you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments, do you, I love lights. I love anything that lights up. I love garland that has lights on it. My star on the top of the tree that has lights on it. I just love lights. Do you like decor that lights up or you know, do you have lights all over your house for Christmas? And I'm not talking like a ceiling fan light, I'm talking like decor lights. Let me know down in the comments. All right, now I'm going to take two tumbling tower blocks and that's what I'm gonna use to secure the reindeer onto the stand. So I am gonna stack two on top of each other and you're gonna see I am gonna pull it off because I realized it wasn't in the middle. So I'm actually gonna give you a different method to doing this. So what you wanna do first is actually glue the two tumbling tower blocks together just like that first and then hot glue that in the middle of the stand. Then you can go ahead and hot glue your reindeer on. And that's just a sure way of knowing that your reindeer is in the middle. And I also put some glue underneath where the bottom of his little face is too. All right, now again, I wanted to go with that rustic look. So I'm going around the uh, stand and I'm going to bring out some of that natural wood around the edges. Next, I'm gonna take this little strand of Christmas lights that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I already put some batteries in it, as you can see. And I'm simply just going to wrap the strand of lights around his antlers, and I just thought this was so cute. I saw like a decal or something of this, and I thought, I wonder you know, if I could bring that to life and actually make it like a, a decor piece. So that was my goal here and my inspiration. So I am, kind of taking apart the two cords. You can see that there's two cords together and this fit perfectly on his little antlers. So then I just added some hot glue to that top little tumbling tower block and that's where I'm going to hot glue the battery pack. Now of course you wanna make sure that you glue it on the side where the screw is facing up in case you need to change the batteries. And then for the cord, I'm just simply gonna use some duct tape and just duct tape the cord to the back. That way the cord is not, you know, waving everywhere and it's kind of hidden. Look how cute it looks so far. Okay, then I kind of thought that it needed something. So on my Cricut, I cut out this decal that says Merry and Bright. So I'm just gonna position that. Now I didn't want it to be right on top of the nose. I, I just wanted it to be kind of like right underneath the antlers or kind of in the middle of the antlers in the nose. So once I have it positioned where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and use my little scraper tool to put my decal on. Now if you don't have a Cricut, you can use letter stickers, you can use rub-on transfers, you can print something else out and Mod Podge it on, you can handwrite it, you can use stencils. There's so many different alternatives to having a cutting machine. So next I took a baby wipe and I dipped it or I'm sorry, a paper towel, and I dipped it into that uh, net mug paint. And I'm just kind of dry brushing, you can't really tell, but it is there, you'll see it in the pictures. I'm dry brushing some of that paint onto those letters because it was just very, very white. So I'm doing this to dull it down a little bit. And then I'm actually gonna go through and put it on the stand, kind of dry brush the stand as well, just to dull down that white stand. I loved how this one came out. I was so proud of it, I have to say. I mean, I don't I mean, and I don't mean it like that, like, you know, to toot my own horn or anything, but it's this one turned out exactly how I wanted it to in my head, and I was so happy with it. I ran downstairs, I'm still living at my mom's. <laughs> I ran downstairs to show my mom, and she absolutely loved it too. But what do you think? For the next DIY, I'm actually gonna be recycling something I made in a video in the summer. So I have this piece and I'm gonna go ahead and take off these little beach pieces or coastal pieces, cutouts, and then I'm going to rip off the burlap and then I'm going to also rip off the 
uh, hanger on it too, the nautical rope hanger. Now for this, you will need five large paint sticks all together. So I obviously already have three of them uh, connected. So I'm gonna show you how to connect. And that's how I connected them right there with the popsicle sticks, as you can see. So I'm gonna do the same thing and I'm going to add two more. And then I'm just going to hot glue these to the piece that I already have using the popsicle sticks too. I hope that makes sense. So it's very simple. You just have to, you will need two packs of the gallons. I think they're gallon sticks. Are they gallon? The really long ones, but you can get them from Lowe's, Home Depot. Uh, my dad just picked me up some from Menards. So they do have them, but you wanna make sure that they are all even with each other. And then you're just gonna go through, sorry, my big head. <laughs> I just wanna make sure it was even. Uh, I just went through and just hot glued them down all together. So it was really easy to do to get those in there. All right, so now I have five paint sticks all connected. So now I'm gonna stain those two just like the other three are stained. And to do this, I'm gonna take a baby wipe. I'm gonna dip it in that Antique Waverly Wax and I'm gonna simply just brush it right on right on the top and this makes for a faux stain. I also went through and uh, faux stained the edges and the sides as well. All right, while that's drying, I'm gonna take these three little ornament signs from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna take these apart. So I'm going to take off little metal piece, I'm gonna take off that little Santa belt and the buttons, and then the actual little burlap piece right here too. And I'm gonna do this to all three. Now you wanna leave the little metal pieces nearby because we will use those in this, this DIY. But of course you wanna save all the others because you can use those for a different DIY. After that, I'm gonna trace each one of my ornaments on a piece of scrapbook paper, and you're gonna see which one I'm, I use in a minute, and then cut it out. So I did that for all three as well. So after they are cut out, I just took some Mod Podge, and I'm gonna use that to glue down the piece of paper on each one of these ornaments. Now again, I did cut it a little bigger than the ornament because now I can take my sanding sponge and I can go ahead and sand around the edges to give it that nice clean cut. Like I said, this is just the best way I could um, or the best way I think in my opinion to achieve that cl nice clean cut. I love this method. I always use it, the sanding, sanding it down. I always do it. So I'm gonna do that to all three. After that, I'm gonna take some super glue and hot glue and glue back down those metal pieces on the top. And I'm using metal, or I'm using super glue because hot glue and metal don't mix, so they won't, it wouldn't stay with just hot glue alone. So I'm gonna use both. And I'm gonna do that to all three. All right, now I'm going to take my sign and I'm gonna put all three of my ornaments on the sign. I did not glue them down just yet. I'm just putting them on there for positioning purposes. And then I'm gonna take this light up, big light bulb <laughs> Christmas light necklace. Now you don't need to put batteries in it or anything cause it already comes with it. So right here, I kind of took it some time to try to figure out how and where I wanted to attach this onto my board. So it did take a little bit of patience and just kind of staring at it to try to figure it out. But eventually I did come up with a plan. So all I did was I just pulled it as hard as I, or like I, I stretched it as far as it will go across the top little strip, the, the top paint stick there. And then I'm just going to tie these on with, a piece of twine and I'm gonna do one right there where I'm tying it, one on the other end and one in the middle. Now I do hide these pieces of twine a little later on so don't worry they're not gonna be seen. Something else I thought of you could probably get away with using zip ties too and it might even give it a stronger hold than the twine but I did double knot it and then I'm gonna go ahead and put one right in the middle and you can see that I that, that one strand of the necklace, the strand without the bulbs, 
is on the back. I hope this is making sense. And then just the part with the bulbs on it, it's on the front. All right, so now I'm gonna hot glue my ornaments down and I am kind of angling the two on the ends. And then this middle one just gonna go straight up and down. So I just think it looks just more fun like that. And then I'm gonna hot glue the on off button pack thing to the back. Sorry, I went out of frame, but you'll see it in one second. There we go. And I just simply hot glued it to the back. Now you wanna make sure that you hot glue it so the on off button is facing out. Next, I took these wooden letters that I got at Dollar General for a dollar each, and I'm just gonna simply paint these black. Okay, so now I'm going to hot glue my letters and of course, I'm gonna do the J, then leave the middle one blank, and then the Y. And now I'm just kind of going through and reinforcing the twine. Now for the O, I took a piece of garland, I gave it a little haircut, <laughs> made it into a circle, because I'm gonna make a little wreath. And then I'm gonna use these pit berry, this pit berry vine, and I'm just going to just wind it all the way around my garland. Then I'm going to hot glue my wreath down to the middle ornament and this is going to create my O. Next I have this like ribbon, it's like burlap ribbon. So I'm actually going to put it through the little holes of my ornaments. Now this was an afterthought. Of course it would have been easier just to do this before I hot glued my ornaments on. But you know, <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm just going to loop it through the ornament and now the now there's a loop and then I'm gonna put the two open ends through the loop and pull it I hope that makes sense and I'm gonna do this for all three and I'm gonna go really fast because it did take me a minute to get all these because I had to like you know finagle it through there because they were already glued down but I do think that that little touch added a lot I really loved it okay so next to use as a hanger, I'm gonna use this nautical rope. And it's actually a little skinnier than nautical rope, but I did get it from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to wrap one end through, and I'm purposely putting it over the twine that is already there. So then, instead of tying it in a knot, I'm gonna hot glue the end of it to the long rope, I hope this is making sense, and I'm gonna hold it there until the glue sets up. And I'm gonna do this on both ends. So there we go, see I wrapped it underneath, and I'm gonna hot glue it to itself. Now to add a little bit of fun, I'm going to take some of this red and white baker's twine and I am going to wrap it around just the bottom part of the glued part of the hanger. I hope this makes sense, but if not, you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna wrap it and wrap it. And then again, I'm going to hot glue the end and I'm gonna do this on the other side as well. Now I kind of made my hanger a little too long. I kind of, I, I might go back and cut it down a little bit. All right, so after that, I just wanted to add a little bit more something, something. So I took my brush that had some white paint on it and I'm just outlining the letters just to make it look like snow. And then I will go in and kind of lightly dry brush over the middle of the letters too. Just like that, I'm gonna go in the middle now, just to give this a little bit more dimension. And then I'm going to do it around my wreath to give it that flocked look. And I really thought that, you know, that really brought it all together. And it really made the letters stand out as well. Now, the great thing is you can use whatever scrap scrapbook paper you want. You can paint those. Just do it to whatever matches your style. 
What do you think? This last DIY came out so adorable, but it was a work in progress. So stay with me on this and we're gonna create something extremely magical. So I'm gonna start off with this little wooden elf that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. And I really did not, I kind of had an idea in my head of what I wanted to do, but I wasn't sure. But I did know that I wanted it to paint her just like my daughter's elf, Twinkles. So I painted the hat, her little jacket and the pants with some red crimson chalk paint from Waverly. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube that you love what you see and you wanna see more. So be sure to smash that like button. All right, so I'm just going through and painting everything. I forgot I did also do the arms too. Now you can see that I didn't do that little ball at the end of her hat, and I'm not doing her shoes. And then I went through with some white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm gonna do her little collar and her mittens. And I think I, oh, and the little like, zigzag shape on her boot like the top part of her little boot too and the little ball at the end of her shoe all right now it's time to make her a little skirt because twinkles my daughter's elf has a skirt so I took some white felt fabric and I folded it onto itself and then cut out a little piece that I thought would be big enough for her skirt. Now I had no idea what I was doing here. You might actually know how to like sew or put together a skirt. So this is Ashley's way of doing it. There probably was a way easier way, but this is just how I made it up and how I did it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going through and hot gluing down all of the open ends so they're nice and clean on the sides. So I'm just hot gluing it all down. And then I'm just going to flip it over just like that. And I did have to, you know, hot glue the inside too because it is folded. Now, I used hot glue to make her little skirt. You can sew it, you can do whatever you want, whatever is easiest for you. Okay, so the only vision I had in my head for her skirt was that I wanted it to be pleated. So the only way I could think to do this was to do like a, a bunching technique. And so I'm bunching it at the top and then I'm just gonna hot glue as I go. Now, you're probably thinking, what are you doing? Because <laughs> this actually did not work. However, I'm showing this to you because it actually plays into the end result. <laughs> so, like I said, just stay with me on this. I was literally making this up as, as I go. So as you can see, it's cute at the top, but you know what's gonna happen after I fold all this on top of each other, it's gonna make it really skinny at the top and it's not gonna go over her entire waist, but I do have a way that I fixed it. So sometimes, you know, it just evolves. That's what crafting is. Like, I knew what I wanted this to look like, this whole DIY, but I didn't know how to get there, so I just went for it. Okay, so now I'm going to put her little skirt. Now I'm noticing, uh-oh, it doesn't go all the way across. So then I pulled it apart, but it still kind of stay, stayed pleated. 
So now I'm just going to hot glue it on just like that. So I wrapped it around the back. And then I'm going to go in the front and I'm going to hot glue just the parts that are touching her little shirt. So you can see that there are pleats on there. So it didn't not work. It just didn't work fully, if that makes sense. Now you will see that I'm going to take this off and move it down just a little bit because I wanted to show more of her shirt. So I'm going to actually go where like the top of his shorts are. And then I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm going to hot glue it back down. And I did leave a little like bump um, through like around the sides so it looks like her skirt is kind of flared out. So I'm just going to go through and just hot glue that again. And you can see that I am kind of bunching it as I go too to create that pleated look. So I don't know that it would be necessary that you do the pleating like I did or you just put the piece of felt down and you just bunch it as you go. I'm not sure, but hey, <laughs> that's, this is just what I did to get to the final result. And then I'm just gonna go through and hot glue the ends to the back again. So now I'm just kind of fixing the skirt a little bit and I hot glued it down so both the pieces were together but you're going to see that I ended up cutting off a little bit of her skirt at the bottom anyways. But to address the little belt, I just went ahead and painted that with some red crimson paint because I just wanted to extend her shirt. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint over the belt and everything and because I really did not need her to have a belt. And you'll see at the end it doesn't really matter because this is all going to be covered anyways. Okay, now I'm going to dress the skirt up a little bit. And I'm going to take this really cute snowflake ribbon. I'm going to start from the back. And I did get this ribbon from uh, Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to start hot gluing it. And then I'm going to follow the pleats at the top. So I'm going to follow all the little bumps. So I'm only going to hot glue it where it touches the bottom. So you can see that it's going to have like a little bump. And I'm going to do this all the way across. Now again, if this part's not perfect, that's okay. Because like I said, you're really not going to see this part. But I just thought, hey, you know what? I'm taking it step by step because I really didn't know where to go after this. So I just decided I'm just going to dress her up. And if you see it, you see it. And if you don't, you don't. All right, then when I got to the end, I did leave a little so I could fold it behind and glue it. And if you'll notice, her face isn't painted either because I really didn't know what to do with that either. All right, now this is when I decided I was going to cut down her skirt a little bit. I just wanted to make it a little shorter. So I'm just going to use my fabric scissors, cut it down, make sure it's all even. And then I'm going to take more of that ribbon and I'm going to hot glue it to the bottom of her skirt. And you can see that I intentionally left some hanging over there at the end. That way I can wrap it around. Now I'm kind of tacking it down and I'm not really hot gluing it all the way across because I wanted it to kind of be pleated there too. All right, so now the ribbon is on her skirt and now I just cut off the, you know, the extra fabric there. And her skirt's looking so cute so far. Okay, so now is when I kind of just want to address her head. So here's what I did. I decapitated her. <laughs> I took off her head off of that ring. And like I said, I really had no idea what I was doing or what I was going to do. But I did know that I wanted this whole thing to stand up. So I had to make her more stable. So to do this, I took a craft stick. 
hot glued it to the back of her head and now I'm gonna hot glue it to her shirt. And I put her head right on top of that little collar. Then I'm gonna move down to the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take off the little ring from her foot to her leg and then I'm gonna hot glue a craft stick underneath both pieces so that way they're both connected. So, like I said, I had an end result in my head, but it was the getting there I wasn't quite sure about. So I'm just gonna do this again. I'm gonna hot glue the shoe to the end of the craft stick, and then I'm gonna glue the craft stick to the back of her leg. And then I'm gonna go underneath, and I'm gonna take her leg off, and I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna take another craft stick, I'm going to hot glue it to the top of her leg, then I'm gonna hot glue the leg underneath her pants, shorts. <laughs> And now this is all like a stick, like a figure now. So now she's stable, I guess. <laughs> all right, so now let's address this face. So I took my light mocha color paint and I'm going to paint her face. Now, if I would have thought about it, I would have gone through and covered all of these little holes. Uh, but like I said, I didn't know what I was going to do. So hindsight's 2020 I would have gone back and um, covered or filled in all of those holes all right now and as you can see I did also paint her ears too next I took my white paint and I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna paint her that little area there but you're actually gonna see that I go back and change it a little bit because I realized I kind of did something like there was no hair I realized and if you're if you're familiar with elf on the shelf you know that they have like brown or black hair so I am gonna go back and paint that in but first I mix some white and red paint to make some pink paint because I want her to have some rosy cheeks so I'm just mixing that right in my lid and then I'm just gonna give her some cheeks. Now, you can't really see it here, but you can still see the detail underneath. So I can see like where her mouth is and where her nose was and stuff like that. So by using those little detail guides, I'm just gonna take my paint pen and I'm gonna color in her mouth and her eyes. And I didn't really do anything to the nose. And then I used the back of my paintbrush, dipped it in some white paint and added some and added a twinkle to her eye. <laughs> All right, then I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm gonna paint the little ball. And then I'm gonna take a white little poof ball and I'm gonna hot glue it to the bottom of her hat. So right now she's looking like Mrs. Claus because that's all white, like where the hair is. <laughs> but you're gonna see that it totally changes the look when I paint her hair brown. Okay, next I'm going to take these little, little red poof balls and I'm gonna hot glue these down to her shoe. So I did one where the hole was at the white part of the shoe and then one where the at the tip of the shoe too. And then I'm gonna take the little poof balls and I'm going to hot glue one to each little pointy end of her collar. Now, you can do whatever color you want. I just, like I said, wanted to paint her to look like my daughter's elf because my daughter's obsessed with her elf. I mean, her elf disappears during the year, year and she thinks that she lives in the vent, the heat vent, and she talks to her all year round. So um, she just loves her elf. So I really wanted to make her like her elf. Okay, next I took these glitter stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint them red. And I painted four here, but I ended up only using three. And I actually had these left over from last year, so I was happy that I still had these little snowflakes. And then after those were dry, I'm going to simply put them on her skirt. Now I do just 
push them down at this point, but that I will go through and hot glue them down too, just for extra support. Uh, and then I actually gave Twinkles some earrings, like the real Twinkles, <laughs> my daughter's elf. I actually glued some on, so I'm going to do that to this little elf too, just by cutting up some little rhinestones. Now I do have a little bow there on her neck, but ignore it because as you can see right there, I took it off. All right, now here's where I decided I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint some hair on. And I think that this helps so much. So all I did was draw one straight, well, curved line and then just paint in like her bangs. And I think that this helps so much. Look at now that really looks like the elf. Okay, so next I'm going to take this ornament that I got from the Dollar Tree, and this is the one that lights up. And I printed off this decal from my Cricut, and it is like a camera, like a lens. And all I did was go into Design Space and go to Images and typed in Surveillance, I think, or Santa Cam, something like that. And this is what... This is what came out. And then you're going to see there's some words too. So I didn't design this. I just went right into the Cricut Access and it was already there. So I did have a little trouble putting this down only because this bulb is textured. There's glitter all over it. Now it does stick. I just had to kind of finagle it a little bit. And I might actually go through and put some Mod Podge over it. I'm not sure yet. So as you can see, I'm just kind of working it all together. It is lumpy. I mean, it is wrinkled, but that's because, you know, there's the bulb is textured. All right, so then this all was one uh, image in design space. So now it says elf cam. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this on. This actually stuck really well. I was, I was surprised. But again, I went super slow when I, this is sped up, but I went really slow when I took it off. There we go, and then I'm gonna put the other one on, right on top. Again, going extremely slow, there we go. Okay, so then I wanted, wanted to hot glue this bulb on her, the front of her and you can see that I did but then it fell off so I didn't even show that part but I wanted it to make it look like she was holding it so here's what I ended up doing I took off her arms and I'm going to re hot glue it on so I'm lining it up where the holes are so as you can see I put some hot glue on the side and then I'm gonna hot glue her arm to the side of her and then I'm gonna hot, tack it down at on the ornament as well. And then I'm just going to hot glue the glove on so it looks like she's holding it. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing underneath. And then I do go and add some more hot glue underneath the ornament as well. But actually this did a pretty good job, like she's literally holding it. <laughs> so I don't, think it should fall off it seems pretty stable so there we go so right where the arm would be you can see I'm attaching it and I am going to add some glue to the bulb there we go and then add the glove on to the hand look how cute that looks and then to dress up the gloves a little bit, I just cut off a little piece of that ribbon and I'm just going to put it at the bottom and that's to also hide the hole as well. And then I'm going to cut off each end. And then I'm going to do the same on the other one. I 
I think this is all coming together. So cute so far. Okay, so now to make a stand, I'm gonna use this palette board that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to paint the entire thing with white chalk paint from Waverly. I am try gonna try to get those like slats in the middle too, but they were kind of hard. <laughs> Well, at least with that brush, the one I'm using. Okay, so then to stand her up, I'm gonna add some hot glue to the middle rung. And then I'm gonna add some hot glue once her feet are in. And then to give her more support, because it was like heavy in the front now because of the bulb, I'm going to hot glue a tumbling tower block behind each one of her feet, of her shoes. And that really seemed to help a lot. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to paint the tumbling tower blocks white. Okay, so I wanted to make a little sign for this DIY too. So I took this wood plank that I got in a pack from the Dollar Tree and I cut off about two inches-ish. <laughs> I really didn't measure, but judging from where it is on that mat, I'm guessing two inches. So I just scored it a bunch of times with this knife, and then I'm just going to bend it back and forth until eventually it breaks off. So it's super easy to cut. There we go, now it just snaps. Now I'm going to sand down the edges, and I am rounding out the corners because the other end is rounded, so I wanted it to match. And then I'm going to give this a coat of black acrylic paint. And I am making sure to go all the way around the edges as well. After that dries, I'm gonna take this decal I printed off my Cricut. And again, this was just in design space. And so it was already there, I did not create this. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my little sign. Now you can see, and I did not catch this until this moment right here, the L is missing like the bottom piece to it and I didn't notice it I don't know if it didn't cut or if it came up when I took off the um like when I transferred it to the transfer tape I don't know but so now I have to kind of recreate it so I'm just drawing it in with my paint pen now I need I need new paint pens I uh, comment down below and let me know what brand of paint pens you like and I want like a set of really nice paint pens and now's the perfect time to ask somebody for it for Christmas because I definitely need them so comment and let me know all right so I as you can see I just drew in that L part and now I'm going to dress up the sign by taking this red and white baker's twine and I'm just going to outline my sign and I am going to go all the way around I've been obsessed with this red and white baker's twine this season because I'm going for the red and white theme this year so I love I yeah I've been obsessed <laughs> Y'all have to let me know down in the comments what, what theme you're going with, what color scheme. All right, and then I'm just gonna hot glue the end down. Okay, so I didn't really love how that was looking, so I did go through with some white paint and paint over it. And I'm showing you this, that way you can see how easy it is to fix some mistakes. Now the C was missing its little um, bottom part too, so I just painted that in too. You have no, no idea. All right, so sorry, the elf was in the way of the camera, but I did hot glue my sign to a red and white straw, and I purposely left some of the straw hanging off the top, or like it's poking out from the top. Then I'm simply going to hot glue the straw to the front of my little elf. And this stayed in perfectly. It like wedged right in there, it was perfect. Then to top finish this off, I'm gonna hot glue a little ball to the top. And then I ended up going back and adding a little bow to the bottom of that sign. And there she is, and she's adorable. What do you think?
Like I said, these three DIYs today were my absolute top favorites of the season so far. I just love how fun and festive they are. And you know, I do have a four year old and I want it to be fun. Christmas is supposed to be fun. So I love that little piece of magic that this provides and it's just so festive. You're gonna have to let me know down in the comments which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Maybe will you be recreating one of them? I definitely wanna know. I cannot wait to decorate the house with all of these fun DIYs. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit that little notification bell, and smash that like button, because like I said, it really helps my channel to grow. And you guys, I am almost to 15,000 subscribers, and I am so thankful for each and every one of you who have already subscribed, and you keep coming back to comment. Thank you, thank you so much. I have really enjoyed sharing all of these festive DIYs with you. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!